Hi and welcome to the November edition of the open source video blog. This is a live stream covering news about open source software and hardware. Please leave a comment in the chat if you're watching this video live or in the, below the video uh, if you have any news to share or comments. Thank you very much for watching this. The open source video blog is coming thanks to the sponsorship of PCBWay. PCBWay is a company specialized in PCB prototyping. It's especially convenient if you're working on a new project, if you're a startup or making some open source hardware projects, PCBWay can be your partner because they provide high quality services for uh, making printed, printed circuit boards as well as manufacturing. Uh, there is a welcome bonus for all new users of uh, PCBWay. So visit PCBWay.com to claim your, um, to register and claim your bonus. Before we start with uh, the latest news, I would like to share you about um, uh, news about OpenFest 2020. OpenFest is the largest open source conference in Bulgaria. Um, I have been speaker on this uh, event in previous year. So this year, uh, it's going to be completely uh, different because of the whole situation we have to live in. And um, uh, it is going to be... Um, it is going to be, um, um, uh, it's going to be um, an open uh, an online event about open source. It's going to happen this weekend on 7th and 8th of November. Uh, it's entirely virtual event. There are talks both in Bulgarian and uh, in English. Uh, so if you, even if you are not uh, from Bulgaria, it's worth visiting it and having uh, a look at some of the uh, international speakers and uh, um, uh, talks that are going to be in English. It's going to be live streamed into several uh, platforms. You can have a look at the schedule at openfest.org. And uh, I think we missed a few slides. So just to say once again, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. Uh, I've already mentioned that it's a great choice for uh, PCB prototyping. Here is how you can claim your uh, getting started bonus. Um, one of the open source events that uh, ended recently in October was Hacktoberfest 2020. Uh, I'm wondering how many of you actually uh, get involved in Hacktoberfest. Uh, it's um, Hacktoberfest, as I've mentioned in the previous editions of the open source video blog, is a global event. Um, it's uh, happening worldwide in uh, October, as the name suggests. And the idea is to encourage more people to submit uh, GitHub pull requests to open source projects. This year, uh, there have been some major changes um, in in the way how Hacktoberfest works. So um, in the previous years, as long as you make a GitHub pull request, and if it's a valid GitHub pull request, uh, you will be part of the Hacktoberfest challenge. Uh, this year, um, the the rules were changed at the beginning of Hacktoberfest. So basically, for for this year, in order to get uh, one of these uh, cool t-shirts as this one, I've showed you this one, this is from uh, previous year, um, from 2019. So in order to get one cool t-shirt, you needed uh, to make four GitHub pull requests. And those uh, GitHub pull requests uh, had to be either accepted or merged by the maintainer. Furthermore, this is uh, this is the new thing that happened in 2020. Uh, GitHub changed the rules, and now um, it was possible to um, in order to to participate in Hacktoberfest, it was mandatory to make a GitHub pull request in a repository with topic Hacktoberfest, and this made uh, the things a little bit more complicated. Um, I, I was quite busy in October. However, at the end of the month, uh, I found some time and made uh, actually five pull requests. Here you can see how I've got uh, four out of four completed and one extra PR. So if you make or someone makes um, uh, uh, GitHub pull request for a repository that is not having the October um, Hacktoberfest as a topic or the maintainer didn't put this topic in the uh, open GitHub pull request, then 
uh, you get this warning here that the repository has been submitted, that the PR has been to submitted to a repository that's not participating in Oktoberfest. Furthermore, uh, the maintainer may uh, label the, um, the, the GitHub pool, pull request as invalid or spam. This is because there have been a lot of people submitting um, useless GitHub pull requests and some of the maintainers have been complaining. So uh, GitHub decided to make a change and they um, um, brought this these new rules. Um, I was slightly disappointed because uh, it made it a little bit more difficult to find out a project that I'm personally interested in and to contribute. However, I found a few and I was happy to participate. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get another cool t-shirt. Let me know if you also participated in Oktoberfest and let me know what your experience was. Now, following, uh, continuing with the news, uh, Linux kernel 5.10 was announced. It is going to be a long-term support for this. Uh, the key features that are, are expected in Linux kernel 5.10 are IMD Zen 3 processor support, Intel uh, Rocket Lake support. Uh, there will be hopefully an open source driver for uh, Radeon RX uh, 6000 series. Uh, there will be file system optimization and uh, storage improvements, as well as uh, various other bug fixes and improvements. So, so stay tuned with uh, and um, um, st stay up to date uh, with uh, the news about the, the Linux kernel. Hopefully, uh, Linux kernel 3, uh, 5.10 uh, will be another great long-term release. Uh, continuing with um, project of the Linux Foundation, uh, the Yocto project. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, a short introduction, the Yocto project is an open source collaborative project of the Linux Foundation for creating custom Linux based systems for embedded devices. It is using the open embedded build system, uh, which includes BitBake and open embedded core. Uh, on a daily basis, I'm using the Yocto project. That's why I thought it's going to be interested and decided uh, to, to in, uh, include this slide. Uh, so Pocky is the reference distribution of the, uh, the uh, Yocto project. It's provided as metadata without any binary files uh, to bootstrap your own distribution for embedded Linux devices. So uh, the Yocto project and Open Embedded are um, de facto standard for building custom Linux distributions for embedded devices. Of course, uh, there are some alternatives such as uh, build root or PDX root. Uh, some people are even still using uh, customized Debian versions. However, uh, my recommendation is to have a look at the Yocto project if you haven't done so and if you're interested in embedded Linux devices. The news about the Yocto project is the release of version 3.2 uh, Gutters Guard. It was released in October 2020. And the next uh, release is, um, is scheduled for April. Uh, it's going to be called uh, Hard Knot. Um, it's going to be version 3.3. The Yocto project has a B annual release cycle, which means that every six months there is a new major release. Uh, the previous re release, uh, 3.1 Dunfeld, was the long-term support release. It's very similar um, as the long-term support of the Linux kernel. The idea is that uh, some patches will be backported and it will be supported for a longer time. Um, I also wanted to share, it's not exactly uh, news, uh, but in this case, it's something interesting that I read. It's um, um, an interview with Eric Raymond, uh, who is a um, 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 famous open source advocate. And he says that uh, Windows 10 will soon be just an emulation layer on Linux kernel. As you know, uh, the Microsoft has significantly changed their attitude uh, towards Linux. Uh, nowadays, uh, Microsoft is uh, one of the um, uh, members and um, leading sponsors of the Linux Foundation. And um, the whole business strategy of Microsoft has changed. Uh, I see that uh, Microsoft is putting more efforts and making more money out of their cloud services. Therefore, they're interested in having a uh, uh, Linux um, um, Linux compatibility. Honestly, I'm a Linux user for quite some time. I have been using Ubuntu on my desktop for now maybe at least eight years, maybe or maybe even more. 
so I haven't seen uh, Windows 10. It's uh, I've heard about Windows 10, never installed it. Um, I personally don't want to try it. I'm I'm a real Linux user, but yeah, I like this article because it shows that um, soon, after all, maybe the year of the Linux desktop will come, and the most popular Linux distribution for desktop will be called Windows 10. <laughs> so it all depends uh, how you count uh, the Linux distributions, but yeah, it's something that we might might see. And I often joke with my uh, my friends working with um, Microsoft technologies that Windows 10 is, uh, is becoming just another Linux distribution. So here is another opinion in this uh, direction. And uh, I'll post a link to this um, this article, if you have missed it, it's going to be in the description of the video, so you can have a look at it after that. Um, also, if you're a Python developer, uh, nowadays you can still uh, enter the Python developer survey for 2020. This is the fourth iteration of the official Python developer survey. Uh, the aim is to understand how the world of Python development looks today and how it compares to last year. Uh, in uh, 2019, 24,000 Python developers from uh, 150 countries around the world participated in the survey. And um, now there is a new survey. If you're writing in Python, uh, if you're developing in this programming language, um, and if you still haven't um, filled in, uh, please go to uh, the link. I'll, I'll post this link again in the description of the video and um, sh uh, share your opinion about Python and what you would like to see and uh, uh, w whatever you think about it. Uh, JetBrains is running the survey, so it's hosted in uh, on a URL at uh, survey, surveys.jetbrain.com on their domain name. Now, um, actually in this episode of the open source video blog, we'll be covering a lot of hardware news. Um, so um, before we proceed with these hardware news, because there have been some interesting things in the hardware world, um, I would like to make an interesting announcement about uh, KiCad. KiCad is a free and open source software tool for, for designing printed circuit boards. So if you wanna make a printed circuit board, or um, it's, um, it's uh, an excellent choice. And uh, it's nowadays uh, more commonly uh, used for designing printed circuit boards. Um, uh, KiCad has been hosted for quite some time on, a, in, on the domain name KiCad-PCB.org. And now the big news is that KiCad.org is now the new permanent internet home of KiCad. Uh, DigiKey made a donation. They bought the KiCad.org domain and the KiCad project is... Uh, finally moving there, all uh, previous links which are, were available at uh, uh, keycardpcb.org uh, will remain um, available, they will function. Uh, however, the, the new domain uh, is something that everyone actually expected to find, it's keycard.org. Uh, keycard so visit uh, keycard.org uh, to have a look at it. And of course, to download and start using uh, KiCad if you haven't done it so far, there are a lot of uh, open source hardware projects done with free and open source software, uh, such as uh, KiCad. So if you want to get started and give it a try, the best approach would be to download KiCad. It runs on uh, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows to install it on your machine and to open an existing, um, an existing open source hardware project. And uh, I would like to say big thanks to the sponsors, PCBWay. This episode is sponsored by PCBWay. And I would like to highlight one feature of PCBWay. Uh, PCBWay has a shared uh, project directory. So if you go to pcbway.com uh, on the um, in the header from the tabs, you can find out um, uh, shared projects. And here is a screenshot of this uh, shared project directory. So it contains a list of various projects. A lot of them are actually um, open source hardware and certified uh, as open source hardware by the Open Source Hardware Association. And um, you can um, you can have a look, of course, at, at those printed circuit boards and you can directly order uh, the board at PCBWay. Uh, really a great opportunity, especially for people who haven't used PCBWay before because PCBWay 
um, is providing a free welcome bonus to all new users. So you can sign up, you can get a bonus and you can uh, choose a project from the shared project directory hosted by PCB Way, and you can order your boards. PCB Way will make them and uh, ship them to you. Uh, really great opportunity, very good services. Have a look at it. And once again, thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring the open source uh, video blog, as well as uh, a lot of um, things happening in the open source communities. Now we're moving on with hardware news, as I promised. And um, the first news is about acquisition. There is something big. It's not directly uh, related to open source. However, it's too big to, to be missed. And um, it makes sense to mention it uh, here in the open source video blog. Uh, AMD agreed to buy Xilinx for 35 billion US, uh, US dollars in stock. Xilinx is an American technology company that develops highly flexible and adaptive processing platforms this is the company that invented FPGA. And nowadays FPGA is uh, becoming more and more popular. Uh, I see more and more uh, interesting open source projects based on um, FPGAs, especially in the hobby market about uh, retro electronics. You can see a lot of, uh, emula uh, not emulations, but directly programming um, old school machines running on FPGA boards. Uh, Xilinx, uh, as a company invented this uh, this whole concept of uh, uh, field programmable gate arrays, has a lot of knowledge, and IMD uh, is going into this uh, huge acquisition. Uh, just to, to remind you that uh, five years ago, in uh, 2015, Intel acquired Altera, another FPGA uh, manufacturer, for approximately 1647 billion US dollars. So yeah, uh, deals in the hardware industry uh, involve a lot of billions. It's a big business and acquisitions take a lot of money. Now, another interesting thing that happened a few days ago, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced Raspberry Pi 400. It's a computer and a keyboard in one shell. It uh, reminds me a lot of Commodore 64 or Sinclair or um, or Acorn Electron computers, all those computers from the 80s pretty much. Uh, so Raspberry Pi uh, 400 is quite similar to Raspberry Pi 4. It's with Broadcom system on the chip uh, running, it's a 64-bit uh, CPU running at 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, Raspberry Pi 4, as far as I remember, on the top of my head was running at 1.5 gigahertz, but you can overclock it. Uh, Raspberry Pi 400 is with uh, Broadcom Video Core 6 and 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough to uh, run emulations uh, such as RetroPie and to play some retro games and to have fun. Uh, it's really convenient that you have everything together in uh, in one box, which is actually a keyboard. So it's uh, it's something that you can easily put your in your backpack and go around. So if you have a look here, here is the 40 pin header, uh, which is uh, uh, which for, for which uh, Raspberry Pi is famous. So all your existing peripherals that you are used to um, to have with your Raspberry Pi 3, 4 uh, or even Raspberry Pi 2 or 0 are now compatible with this. Um, of course, it's a little bit more uh, it's a little bit different because uh, in this case, you're not putting your add-on boards on top of the Raspberry Pi, but instead it's on the side. Um, as uh, someone who's uh, really in love with Raspberry Pi, I am um, super excited about this because I also like old school machines. I'm uh, even buying some old um, computers. And I mentioned uh, Sinclair and uh, um, Acorn Electron. If you are not familiar with those uh, computers, have a look at the BBC documentary Microman um, and um, and uh, Google them in Wikipedia. So um, Sinclair was dominating the market uh, in in um, uh, in the 80s uh, with, of course, with Commodore 64. Both of those machines are, were used by generations of kids to play video games. And uh, Acorn Electron is not as popular as them. However, Acorn is the company which later on became ARM 
and Raspberry Pi is one of those, uh, is actually the most popular uh, ARM machine out there. Furthermore, uh, I've mentioned Commodore and um, Commodore 64 was the uh, best selling computer in of the 20th century and uh, recently uh, Raspberry Pi surpassed it in terms of sales and now Raspberry Pi is the best sold personal computer. Uh, a lot of people might say that Raspberry Pi is not a real computer but actually the newer Raspberry Pis are quite um, quite powerful and uh, you can do a lot of things with them. Um, there is a blog post by uh, one of my favorite bloggers, cnxsoftware.com. Uh, he did a teardown of, um, of Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 400. And uh, here is how it looks uh, inside. Uh, what is in interesting that I was expecting to see here the Raspberry Pi Compute Mo Model 4 because uh, recently the Raspberry Pi Foundation also announced the Raspberry Pi Compute Module. Uh, however, uh, there is a big surprise. No, there is a dedicated board inside the Raspberry Pi 400 and there is no Raspberry Pi Compute Module. So it's a dedicated board, a spe very specific board that fits in this very specific place in the keyboard. Um, I have to say that one of the most challenging things in hardware is actually not the real hardware, but uh, the plastic enclosures and boxes. And um, the Raspberry Pi keyboard, I have one, is, uh, is awesome. All the Raspberry Pi um, cases are really cool. And I'm sure this is another great product. I will order it in the near future. Um, yeah, it's surprising to see that they've made a, their a completely different board instead of using a compute model. But who knows, maybe in future, uh, someone will, um, will make um, another another board that fits and supports the uh, supports the compute module and fits into this keyboard so yeah it's an interesting opportunity and here is my raspberry pi i always have a raspberry pi on my desk actually i have a few of them here um, here is another one and another one so yeah raspberry pi is something that most probably nowadays almost um, anyone has on uh, his desk, especially for me, I'm uh, actually doing a lot of things with them. So even with, uh, as part of my job as a software engineer. So here is this, this is my Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm looking forward uh, to buy this uh, Raspberry Pi in the shape of a keyboard. Now we're uh, continuing with uh, hardware news, but this time with open source hardware news. Uh, before that, uh, the, the news about Raspberry Pi 400 and uh, uh, Xilinx were interesting, but not directly open source hardware, actually not open source hardware at all. Um, so uh, now um, the Open Source Hardware Association, which is an, uh, a legal entity registered uh, in the United States, um, and it's work uh, looking after the open source hardware uh, summit that is happening annually, as well as the open source hardware uh, certification program, which is a free program for certifying uh, um, hardware that is uh, truly open source. Uh, they had um, new board. Uh, they have a new board members. There was a voting between all members. I'm a member of the open source hardware association, and I was uh, happy to vote. So the new board members are uh, Michael. I'm not sure how to read this uh, name. Uh, sorry if I pronounce it uh, wrong. Over, over what? Toby, Javier, Drew, and Shah. Um, uh, there, uh, some of them have been uh, on on board with the Open Source Hardware Association previously, and uh, have a lot of experience in running this. Um, I wish uh, best of luck to all of them. Uh, they're doing great job. Uh, the Open Source Hardware Association is something that uh, we all needed and it's great to see uh, the things that they're doing. Uh, keep in mind that, that they are spending, they have uh, different full-time jobs and they are doing this in their spare time. Uh, these people are, or, are all around the world. The Open Source Hardware Association uh, movement uh, is getting some traction. Uh, I see new and new boards certified ev uh, every new month. And actually I wanted to, to speak about this because uh, we have um, more certified boards in October. October was the open source hardware month. This is uh, another initiative of the Open Source Hardware Association. 
Uh, numerous new open source hardware products uh, have been certified by Oshawa in October. Uh, they are from around the world. There are so many of them that I cannot uh, list all of them. This is just the short list of the countries, the United States, the UK, um, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Canada, Germany, Mexico, France, Bulgaria, Guatemala, Switzerland, Spain, Thailand, India, uh, Mauritius, Netherlands, Croatia, China. Maybe I'm missing some, uh, some countries. Um, the open source hardware month uh, was a huge success and a lot of a, a, a lot of individuals and companies certified their uh, products with the Open Source Hardware Association. The certification is free, um, so you can uh, go to uh, Oshawa uh, website, uh, go to the certification directory and have a look at more details about them. Uh, there is one particular board that I would like to highlight. It was, uh, it was uh, certified in October. It's Olimax Olinuxino STM32F3. Um, as you probably know from the previous editions of the open source video blog, I'm based in Bulgaria, in Povdiv, Bulgaria, and Olimax are my neighbors. I'm a good friend with, with them. Uh, they have excellent engineers and make an excellent uh, products. We have already covered uh, some of the, their products in previous editions of the open source video blog. Uh, so this board uh, um, is, um, is, a, um, uh, is it's, it's with a form factor of... Um, of an Arduino, one of the first Arduino boards. However, it's with STM32 um, microcontroller. It's uh, so this new uh, new board is called Olimexino STM32 F3, and it is based on a previous edition which was called Olimexino STM32. Uh, there is a new uh, microcontroller which is uh, which allows you to have CAN and USB at the same time. So this board is. Um, appropriate for those of you who are interested in experimenting in the automotive industry and do-it-yourself projects for the automotive industry because of the canvas. Uh, the new board has increased amount of memory compared to the old one. The power supply is now from uh, 4.5 uh, volts to 40 volts, which allows uh, this board to work in automotive applications without special converters. Um, it, um, it is suitable for industrial grade temperature. So it's pretty good thing uh, to have a look at it. Furthermore, there is a real-time clock, backup battery holder. Uh, you can you can see it. It's here, right in the middle of the board. And um, the best news is that the price is lower compared to the previous version of Olimixino STM32. Uh, keep in mind that um, Olimix uh, uh, has this prefix for their uh, microcontrollers, uh, uh, Olimixino. And Olimax also make a lot of uh, uh, embedded Linux devices. I know that they are working on several new embedded Linux devices, including one with STM32 MP1. And I'm looking forward uh, for the official launch, launch of these devices. I'll be happy to buy one and uh, mention it here in the new editions of the open source video blog. Another product uh, project in focus, and um, actually, um, I, I, I'm mentioning this project because um, I attended a presentation about it at the Embedded Linux uh, uh, conference um, at the end of October. It's Pluto SDR for all those ham, uh, um, which, are, which means um, uh, amateur uh, radio um, uh, people out there. This is a portable self-contained um, uh, radio frequency learning module. Uh, it's um, Quite impressive in terms of um, um, of uh, supported features uh, and coverage. Um, so the the presentation that I've attended, which uh, went into uh, it did deep technical dive into the project, explain how it works, so on, is available here. And uh, of course, this link will be uh, will be published in the description of uh, the video below. And uh, hopefully, the Linux Foundation will soon upload. Uh, the video in their uh, YouTube channel, so um, you'll be able to have a look at it. Now, um, we're coming to the end of the open source um, hardware, uh, uh, sorry, of the open source uh, video blog, and uh, I would like to mention some uh, upcoming open source events. Uh, we started with announcement about OpenFest, uh, I'll just repeat it because it's something that it's important for me. Uh, this is the largest open source event in Bulgaria. 
this year uh, it is gonna be in uh, in a very different it's gonna happen in a very different way uh, it's gonna be like online talks that will happen this weekend on 7th and 8th of October actually that's why I've I was in a rush with this uh, live stream of the open source uh, uh, video blog just because I wanted to to uh, to make it before uh, open fest so if you have some spare time please uh, uh, visit openfest.org to have a look at the schedule and to have a look at the videos uh, if you are uh, uh, there, there will be live streams, so it's, a, it's an entirely virtual event. Uh, there are talks both in, in uh, English and Bulgarian. Uh, it, it's going to be live streamed in several platforms, including uh, the uh, the YouTube channel of OpenFest, and uh, everyone will be able to join the conversation there. Uh, ISTA is happening uh, a few days later. Uh, so is Linux App Summit. Um, GitHub is having their own event, which is called GitHub Universe 2020. It's happening uh, in December, between 8th and 10th of December. All those uh, events are virtual. Um, obviously, 2020 is uh, not the year of uh, physical events. The only physical event that I've attended was FOSDEM. Um, also, uh, uh, Remote Chaos Experience is happening in December. Um, it's, um, it's a must-visit uh, event for hackers and people interested in security. In general, it's happening, of course, in Germany. However, this year it's going to be virtual. So just stay in, in front of your computer and participate. Uh, Pi Wars Conference 2021 is happening in January, 23rd of January. It's a virtual event. Pi Wars in general is, um, is a non-destructive competition for robots. Um, the idea is that it's happening in Cambridge. I'm a friend with uh, some of the organizers. They have a great team of volunteers. Uh, so they make challenges for uh, robots um, and uh, uh, teams uh, primarily consisted of children uh, compete with each other. And once per year, they're doing this uh, Raspberry Pi Wars conference. The idea of the conference is that either participants or people experienced uh, in um, fields uh, related to uh, Raspberry Pi. Actually, the name Pi Wars is because of Raspberry Pi. And it's happening in Cambridge, which is the home of Raspberry Pi. Uh, so at the Pi Wars conference, there are a lot of interesting talks. Uh, the focus is on robotics with Raspberry Pi. At the moment, um, the call for papers is opened. Um, I think today or uh, yesterday I received uh, an email about uh, the open uh, call for paper. So if you would like to join Power Wars Conference as um, a speaker, now is the right time to do it and to submit your proposal. Otherwise, if you want to join it as um, a visitor, uh, mark the date in your calendar, 23rd of January. After that, uh, between 25th and 29th of January, uh, the, things, uh, the Things Conference will happen. Uh, this, is, um, this is a conference for telecommunications. Uh, it's happening, uh, it's uh, organized by the Things Network, which is the famous network for LoRa One. And uh, furthermore, uh, now uh, we'll have FOSDEM uh, 2021 as a virtual event. Um, in general, FOSDEM is the largest open source conference of, uh, in Europe. Um, it was the only event actually that I managed to visit in person in 2020 because it was at the beginning of the February before all the things that happened after that in um, this year. However, next year, FOSDEM is going to be virtual. Um, so save the dates in your calendar. Um, the first uh, the first weekend of February. It's um, it's a tradition to have it the first weekend of February. Um, in general, it's uh, held in a university in Brussels. This time, it's going to be in front of the computers. It's going to be super different from what we are used to have, but um, different not necessarily means bad. And uh, there'll still be a lot of interesting talks to attend. So yeah, it's worth visiting it, even if it's virtual. Some key dates. Um, 31st of October was the deadline for developer room proposals because FOSDEM is um, happening uh, with a lot of developer rooms simultaneously. So basically, there is, a, for example, developer room for uh, uh, embedded devices. There is an embedded uh, room. There could be an embedded room for a specific 
programming language. Some um, open source companies like Mozilla, in the past Mozilla had their own room. And all those rooms are um, having as their own conferences going on through the day. Um, so 10th of November, actually in five days, the accepted developer rooms will be announced. So in um, five days, on 10th of November, we'll see which are the rooms for FOSDEM 2021. Uh, on 15th November or earlier, um, the developer rooms will issue call for papers. This means that the developer rooms will start searching for speakers. And uh, finally, by the end of the year, uh, by 31st of December, the developers will, room will publish their own schedules. So FOSDEM is a super large conference because there are so many developer rooms and each developer room there is a talk. So it's, uh, of course, it's absolutely impossible for a single person to visit all uh, developer rooms uh, and uh, physically absolutely impossible to visit uh, all the, the talks because they're, are, they're happening simultaneously. Um, I have been in the past, I think, eight years or maybe seven years, I have attended FOSDEM uh, in person. It's a, it's a huge event, thousands of people attended. Uh, it's, it's free. This is something that I enjoy in FOSDEM. Now it's going to be virtual, but maybe because it's virtual, we'll have even more people. So thank you very much for watching this episode of the open source video blog for November 2020. Uh, once again, huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And if you need um, uh, to manufacture a printed circuit board to make a prototype, PCBWay is your friend. Um, earlier in the show, I've mentioned about the shared project directory hosted by PCBWay. So if you are interested in, in hardware but don't know how to start, uh, you can choose some of the shared projects and you can order them at PCBWay. There is a, a welcome bonus for all new users. Um, they're really interesting um, shared uh, projects. I had a look at them earlier today. Some of them uh, related to retro electronics are pretty cool. And uh, I see the first command actually today, uh, Jeremy's uh, saying thanks, awesome update, love these episodes. Thank you very much for uh, joining Jeremy. It's uh, it's pleasure to see that people like it. Um, I have to say that I'm not very well prepared uh, tonight uh, because I was in a rush to make this episode before, before OpenFest and um, yeah, uh, once again, I, I would like uh, uh, to highlight Open Source, uh, OpenFest as an excellent event that you should consider um, watching if you have time during the weekend or if you don't have time now to watch it uh, after that because all videos will be available. OpenFest is uh, one of those events that we have here in Bulgaria that uh, has the spirit of FOSDEM. Uh, so it's... Um, it's, of course, it's not as large as, um, as uh, FOSDEM, but uh, when we had it physical as a physical event, uh, there have been additions uh, on which we had uh, something like 2,000 people joining it. So it's pretty cool. So thank you again for watching uh, the open source video blog. Uh, please share your thoughts as a comment uh, below when... Um, uh, after uh, after we finish uh, this video, I'll upload all links about this um, news. I hope they're interesting. If you think that I'm missing some news, and I'm sure that I'm missing some, some news because there are so many things happening uh, in the open source world, and if you think that uh, so I'm missing something valuable, um, please share this uh, as a comment, and in the next uh, episode of the open source video blog, uh, I'll make sure that it will be, uh, it will be mentioned. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube ch channel, hit the like button. Um, hopefully in future I'll have uh, more time to make um, this type of live streams. Uh, also, if you have any ideas what to cover in the new live streams, uh, please share them. It will be, it, it, for me, it's, uh, it's uh, fun to, to make those uh, live streams. Uh, and um, considering the circumstances we live in, uh, probably for future, uh, we'll be doing more of them. Stay safe. It was a pleasure seeing you. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode of the Open Source Video Blog. Bye-bye.